Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, back, and I'm back. I'm glad to be back. I hope you guys have missed me because I have certainly missed you uh, from having these little weekly uh, meetings here where we get a chance to come into your home on your cell phone, uh, through social media, however you get this, and just give you a greetings and whatever the latest thing is that's on my mind and my heart, whatever God's place there, I get to share it with you. And I want to thank you for the way you share and the way you pray for me and the way you stand by this ministry. And most importantly, I want to thank God for the way that you love Jesus Christ. I want to remind you of something. Why are you watching this today? Uh, when it's over, or you may just stop and do it right now, just think you're loved by the God of the Bible. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves us. And with everything that's going on in the world today, I'll tell you what is not waning at all. And that is the love of Jesus Christ for each one of us and uh, his care of us. Yes, gas prices are sky high. We're dealing with inflation like we haven't seen in the last uh, 40 years. It doesn't seem like the politicians have an answer for it at all. Oh my, you go to the grocery store and they stick a shock. You stop to get gas and, you, and you're shocked and you're concerned about how you're going to pay your rent when all your money is spent and all those, all those things that are, going, that are going on. Well, I want to tell you that the God of the Bible is sending favor your way. He's going to stretch your money. He's going to bless your automobile. He's going to bless your family. He's going to bless your home. Listen, listen, he is on your side. He loves you. He loves me. And we are going to get through this in the name of the Lord. Listen, I'm excited about tonight. I'm excited about the times in which we live. And, you know, we're winding down to the end of uh, Jesus Pride Month here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, where we are reclaiming God's rainbow, my friends. And I pray that your pastor has joined me. And if he hasn't, I ask him, hey, uh, pastor, uh, why are we allowing the enemy to redefine the month of June. Pastor, have you noticed you can hardly watch a commercial? Pastor, have you noticed you can hardly go into a coffee shop, uh, uh, a sports, a sporting store, uh, a, uh, a department store without seeing, uh, hey, how about this, an amusement park without seeing all of the flags and things up where people are celebrating uh, perversion. Well, I think that if they want to celebrate perversion, listen, this is America. Celebrate whatever you want to celebrate. But when it comes down to God's rainbow, I don't think that the church ought to stand idly by and allow the rainbow to be redefined. So here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, we celebrate the month of June. Yes, we do it to mirror uh, so-called pride month. We do it to say we are proud also, but we have Jesus pride. Our pride is in the God who made the rainbow. It's his promise. It's his promise to us that he would never flood the earth again with water. And you know what? He has kept his promise and it reminds him of the promise that he made. And it reminds us of the promise that he made. And I want to I want to appeal to bishops, leaders, pastors, churchmen, uh, superintendents, all oh, my stewards, leaders of every church. Uh, please, please, please. Let's take this back. Let's let's say something. Amen. Listen, Genesis nine and 13 says, I do set my bow in the cloud. It shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come to pass when I bring a cloud, when I let a storm come over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the clouds, and I will remember my covenant, which, uh, which is between me and you and every living creature 
of all flesh and the waters shall no more, look at this, shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh and the bow shall be in the clouds and I will look upon it and that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every creature of all flesh upon the earth. What a beautiful sign. The rainbow is, but we ought not to let them take the rainbow. I'm telling you, got to have a little Jesus pride here. And my friends, I'm excited. Uh, Brother Leach and I were talking just a moment ago before uh, we came on the air and to, to make this. And we were talking about how we're on track. Now we're on track. You know, you see all this stuff going on in the world and you wonder, Lord, what the world? What's going on? Well, we're on track. You know why I say that? We're right where the Bible said we would be at this time. The word of God declares that in the last days, evil men and seducers would wax worse and worse. Evil men and seducers, swindlers would wax worse and worse. Here's what's said, deceiving and being deceived. They'll deceive themselves. The Bible warns us that in the last days, men would not endure sound doctrine, but would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. We're warned that some, that many would depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, my friends, when you look at society today, you must admit that that's what you see. But if you don't know how to look at it, when you see it, it will discourage you. It will, it can make you throw up your hands and say, what's the use? But if you look at it through the lenses of the scripture, you're going, whoa, wow, it won't be long. Jesus Christ is soon to come. Everything is as the Bible said it would be. The word of God said in the last days, it would be as it were in the days of Noah. They paid Noah no attention. He preached it was going to rain. You know what people were busy doing? Living their own lives, marrying, giving their daughters in marriage, uh, eating and drinking and living it up and didn't pay attention to a thing until Noah entered into that ark. And oh, my friends, my friends, my friends, they they were, they realized then that they should have listened to the preacher. Well, this preacher is crying aloud and sparing not. And there are many others. And I pray that you would listen to the preacher. I have something in my hand that I'm so excited about. I am so excited about. I am so proud. My son-in-law, my, he also serves here as the first assistant. Uh, to yours truly at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and he is our youth pastor. I thank God for him. Bonner did a survey the other day showing that uh, uh, 12% or so of youth pastors have a biblical worldview. If that's the case, and these are the cats who are, in, who are preaching and teaching our young people, what does that tell you about the church of tomorrow? But I thank God that Elder John Amachuku has a biblical worldview. He's a great preacher, a tremendous uh, man of God. Uh, he's a fantastic son-in-law, fantastic dad, and I love him so. I have in my hand his latest release. It is called Erased, Erased, Uncovering the Lies and the Culture of Critical Race Theory and Abortion. I tell you, I began to read it the other day, he put it in my hand, gave me an autographed copy, and I began to read, and I could hardly put it down. Uh, you can, uh, and we have other good news, one of the largest Christian publishers in existence is uh, uh, John and the, the publisher are inking out a deal now, so we're excited about that, we'll be telling you more about it, but there are copies that you can get right here. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, this coming Sunday, he will be uh, doing some, uh, uh, we'll have him out and, and, and you can get a copy and get an autographed copy from the author. We're excited about this book, Erased. I'm excited about what God is doing through this young man. And my friends, I'm excited about what the God of the Bible is doing in these last days. Now, I'm excited 
about tonight because I'm telling you, God has given me a word and I can hardly wait to deliver it to you. And I want you to make your way to the upper room church of God in Christ. I missed you guys. I have missed you. Now, I wasn't out somewhere uh, sipping a pina colada. Uh, wasn't out somewhere with my, with my uh, 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 sitting by a pool doing nothing. I'm going to do that next week. Yes, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> and uh, I need one because we've been going, going, going. But last week we were at uh, up in uh, Asheville at the Ames Convention, and and uh, the week before that uh, we were we were out in uh, uh, a, a couple weeks ago we're out down in uh, Orlando, Florida at the Women's Convention. And you know there's been many things going on. And, uh, and I've missed you and, and you've been praying for me and I appreciate the way you've stood by me, but I want you to join me here tonight. I'm armed. I'm loaded. There's something that God has put on my heart to share. So join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Uh, and, and before we do the little drum roll, we got to continue to pray for our nation. People are still breaking the law. They're still breaking the law. Now, by the time you see this, perhaps the Supreme Court will have already spoken. But they're still breaking the law, marching in front of justices' houses and uh, uh, trying to intimidate them. This is not democracy. This is not the way things are supposed to be. We are living in a day where we're calling wrong right and right wrong. But my friends... The word of God is right. The word of God is true. And I, 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 I'll go a little further. The word of God is truth. Did you hear that? Truth. That's why I don't claim my truth. And there's no point in you talking to me trying to claim yours. Jesus gave me the definition of truth. Jesus said in John 17 and 17, the B clause said to the father, thy word is truth. And so tonight I'm going to teach the truth of God's word right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, where we will be having Bible study. <laughs> oh, man, I get a kick out of that. I just lo I love the idea of being excited about studying the scripture. I mean, I'm, I'm an excited person. I enjoy living. God's good to me. I, I, I get excited. I, I enjoy a bicycle riding. I enjoy working out. I enjoy my wife. I enjoy my children, my grandchildren. Oh, I enjoy my members. I enjoy what I do for a living. I enjoy living in this great land of ours, this great country. This country where people are doing everything they can to get into it. Where over a million has gotten in and, and illegally. Just, just, just illegally. Uh, 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 since the current administration, you know, they, they, they stopped the wall and the borders are open and people are pouring in and uh, uh, the people aren't being tracked. And I am, before you judge me, for legal immigration. But I oppose illegal immigration with everything in me because it's illegal. And you, you, you can't have a country without borders and without having a say as to who enters and who doesn't. You, you exercise that with your home, don't you? With your business, with your restaurant, with your church, with everything else. So I thank God for this great land. I thank God for being alive. I enjoy life. But there is nothing to me, my friends, like getting in to the pages of this book. <laughs> This book right here, the Word of God, the only thing that's going to last forever. We'll see you tonight.